All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who is set to main event Bellator 285, which goes down on September the 23rd. A very intriguing lightweight bout going on between Benson Henderson and Peter Queeley, and very happy to be welcoming Peter onto the show. How's the day going so far there, man? Yeah, pretty good. Um, busy day. Just as uh, the media stuff was kind of ramping up a bit now, as it always does, so I was busy with that today. Um, doing some filming and stuff, but all good. Yeah, I was going to say, are you getting sort of used to that a little bit now? Because it seems like your last couple fights have been like pretty prominent. Are you getting used to the additional media obligations and all? Uh, yeah, it's just part of it, isn't it? It's just normal. You have, you have to do it. It's, sometimes it's a bit a bit inconvenient. You know, it kind of gets in the way of things and stuff, but I always make time for it, and I, and I appreciate the interest people show and me and, and my fights and the shows here in Ireland so it's it's a privilege to do it it's, it's absolutely fine yeah for sure I get what you're laying down and everything like that but I would think you'd be especially excited being on this card just because the last you know foray into Ireland didn't really pan out with the injury kind of popping up so is there that pronounced level of excitement just getting to have that Ireland competitive effort this calendar year with the backdrop of that happening uh, yeah, it, it feels like a while since I fought, and you know when you when you're coming off a you know a very important loss like like my last fight was against Patricky, you want to get the taste of that out of your mouth as soon as possible. So I wanted to fight in February and get that out of my system and, and move on, and that didn't happen obviously because of the injuries, and it's it's kind of been with me now for almost a year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of putting that behind me and, and moving on. Yeah, and you had a bit of a unique post after that last fight. I mean, obviously not dwelling on it too much, but I found it to be a curious kind of confluence there because you described it as one of the most disappointing nights of your career, but also one of the best nights of your career. Was that large in part due to the like Irish fans and like the really warm reception you got when you came out? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. You know, it was a heartbreaking night for me because, you know, you've... you've you've spent your whole career climbing to the top of this mountain and then you then you take a little small slip and you it feels like you slide all the way back, back down again um, and especially since I'd beaten Patricky previously I really was confident that I, could, that I could beat him again but you know he's a great fighter and he, he did very well on that night and so that was heartbreaking but you know it's a lot of fighters will never experience the kind of um, the kind of experience I have here in Dublin and the support I have and and all the rest of it. So that's why it's kind of bittersweet, you know. I'm very conscious that that still happened for me, and that's an amazing achievement, and I'm very lucky. Yeah, and to the point of getting back in that, like, title picture, I mean, it seems like you're not a great deal far away from it. Like you said, you already have that victory over the reigning champion, but fighting a guy like Benson Henderson, who's previously been a champion for UFC and WEC and is also ranked at 155 pounds, obviously you're not overlooking this task per se but i would think the ideal outcome here would present an opportunity for you to get closer to another crack at that lightweight title yeah definitely i, I think if, if i if i'm very lucky i think maybe i could get a fight for the uh fight for tricky again right after this fight or at the very least it's like this fight and then one more fight maximum i think um that would be realistic i think to, to say that but if things panned out and the dominoes fell my way. It could happen that I that I get right back to the title after this fight because Benson is such a big name and he's such a high caliber opponent, and it means something when you when you get a win over someone like him. And I think that could kind of put me right back in. Yeah, and I imagine that's what you were thinking when the bout offer initially came your way. I find it kind of curious because in doing my backgrounding on you, you weren't necessarily a guy that like as a kid like dreamed of becoming a fighter. So maybe the connection is a little different because like maybe some people fighting a guy like Benson Henderson would be looking at the I guess broader reputation and things of that nature like how do you I guess look at this fight here just taking on a guy in Benson Henderson who's been at the top for a decent while yeah I, I, I've, I've been asked this question a few times in the last few months and I always kind of get the same answer and that's that you know if, you, if you'd have told me whatever 10 12 years ago that I'd be fighting Benson in the three arena in my country's biggest, you know, stadium, and that I'd probably be more popular than him, I would have laughed at you. You know, it's 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 a great privilege. I'm very proud of myself, how far I've come. Um, it doesn't feel like that long ago 
in the grand scheme of things that I was, you know, sleeping aside SPG in a car chasing this dream. So, you know, I need to stop sometimes and kind of pat myself on the back and, and you know, kind of really take account of, of how far I've come and fighting Benson Henderson in Dublin, in the Tree Arena, in front of a sold-out crowd is a, you know, really kind of is a, really kind of cements that for me. You know, it's a, it's a big achievement and that, that's what it means to me. Yeah, a lot of time has passed since, you know, the times with Cousin Mike in his bed and kind of going through the grittiness of it all, eh? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, 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 and it's not, it's not that long ago. You know, it's probably, I'm trying to think what timeline that was on. That was only 10 years ago. That was maybe less than 10 years ago. Maybe it was, that was probably, yeah, let's say eight, nine, ten years ago that was. And that's not that long, really, when you, when you think about it. Um, so, you know, I'm just, uh, things are going brilliant for me. I'm, I'm very lucky, very lucky with the support I have. I'm very lucky with the the support Bellator give me and the interest they, they show in me and in Ireland as a venue and stuff. This all helps me. Um, you know, you, 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 you can't do it all on your own. You need support. And I've had, I've met some great people in MMA and I've, I've, got, I've got some great support and I'm just doing my, my best with that. Yeah, for sure. And then some localized kind of support just in terms of like SBG Ireland combatants kind of being on the card and being out of that SBG kind of gym. Like how much does that kind of inform the performances and stuff like that? Just like as much as it's an individual sport, just having some, you know, <clears throat> like collective kind of representation, just people from the same space and all. Uh, yeah, it's, all, it's always, um, you know, it's always good in the gym when when there's a team of guys that are kind of, all training towards the same event because you get a bit of synergy then in terms of training partners and things where you always have a lot of active guys on the mat that you can train with that are in shape, they're hungry, they're they're preparing for something, they're going to give you good work. You know, this is this is important. Sometimes, you know, earlier in my career, you might have some obscure kind of a date that doesn't fall in line with a time anyone else is fighting. And guys take time off. And sometimes you can find yourself, you know, without high level training partners at times you know so um, it is good that um, we have a lot of guys on this show because you get a lot of very high level training as I said in the run up to it and that, 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 can, that can be important yeah and kind of a similar dynamic too I mean he was telling me he's training in like a different kind of space now but part of that SBG lineage just James Gallagher kind of being on the card and then sort of a similar situation to kind of look into rebound as well do you find you still like chop it up with him and everything like that i would feel like there's still a level of camaraderie even if maybe he's training in a bit of a different kind of situation now ah yeah james is one of my best friends he's he's literally like my little brother that's that's kind of how i view him um so I, I speak to him all the time even though he's in the states now training um now unfortunately he's not on this card maybe you, you just weren't aware of that but he, he um his fight is actually off so he, he won't be competing next weekend. Um, oh, damn, I hadn't noticed that. Sorry? I said, oh, damn, that's unfortunate. I hadn't noticed that. Was there, like, some sort of injury that had popped up or just moved to a different card? Or Yeah, no, it's not moved to a different card. It's just, it's just off for now. Um, so, you know, that's very disappointing, obviously, for the people here. He's very popular here, and, you know, he's, he's loved here in this country. Um and for me as well, to be honest, I was got it because I love when I'm fighting with James on the same card. It's, it's so good. That, that's something I do feel a lot of camara- camaraderie with. And I love when he's in my dressing room and he's we're always pretty pretty close to each other on the card. He might be main event or I'm coming or vice versa. So we pose off each other and we get a lot of energy off each other. So I miss him in the dressing room, to be honest. So um, that, that, that's disappointing. Yeah, for sure, and all the best in his situation. Hopefully he's able to get back to it sooner than later, for sure. But, I mean, you've had such great walkouts so far with, like, the Bellator Ireland cards and everything like that. Can you even put into words how it feels in that given moment, just, like, the level of energy that keeps mounting? Like, I've shown some of those videos to some of my friends that aren't even, like, the most ardent mixed martial arts fans, and I can tell they're, like, just enamored by it. Like, there's just really something to it in that regard like what does it feel being at the nucleus of something like that yeah that, that, it's a hard question to answer um because it's number one it's it's there's so much stress 
that it's hard to kind of even enjoy this for me, you know, because I'm, it's a stressful situation, I probably have a very hard opponent in front of me, I'm trying to kind of think about that, and also, it's just so bloody crazy when you're, when you're walking out, it's, it's surreal, you know, I've done this a few times now in Dublin, and it's, I'm going to, that's one thing I actually said to someone the other day, I'm, I'm really going to try and enjoy this one, you know, I, who knows how many more times I, I will get to do this, and I want to actually really enjoy it, because it's amazing, um, and I'm going to try and, you know, savor this, and try and take in the energy, and try and actually, you know, maybe crack a smile even, and try and enjoy this crowd, because I'm so serious sometimes, and I'm walking out, I think I don't even enjoy it, which is crazy, because I should be, because it's, it's amazing, um, but to answer your question, it's, it's hard to describe, that arena, I don't know if you've ever been in it, but it's it's a bit like a like an amphitheater, like a hand fan, all the crowd is on one side, so... When I've actually fought in bigger arenas than this, but they don't feel as loud as this because all the all the noise is coming from one direction, and it's very unique when you're in there. It's like this kind of wall of sound and pressure coming from one side of the arena, um, and it's just absolutely crazy. It's like um, it's just mad. To give you, a, I'll tell you a funny story actually. When um, when I fought Ryan Scope a few years ago, a few years ago in Dublin. Um, I was talking to Ryan the week after, just just kind of touching base on him, whatever, whatever, just chatting to each other about the fight. And um, he said to me, he said something very funny. He said, um, I said to him, you know, were you prepared for the the arena and the, and the noise and the kind of you know the the hostility of the crowd and stuff? And he goes like, he goes, I thought I was. He said, but when I walked down, I. I kind of wasn't. He said. I, he goes. He said he remembered. He said something funny. He said he was standing, getting his vaseline put on outside the cage, and in his words, some wifey was was standing at the railing beside the cage, screaming in his face. You know, at, like some middle aged woman screaming at him from, from ringside. So it's a crazy environment. It's, it's really crazy there. Um, so you know, it's it's it's, it's wild. That's a good one. Yeah, I love that. It definitely is quite the environment, and unfortunately, I haven't been there as of yet, but definitely on the proverbial bucket list. I feel like that would be an awesome time, but something that I thought was curious, because like you said, you've been talking about it in like a few different interviews where like 10 years ago, if someone said to you, you'd be in this position, you'd be like, oh, you know, get a grip, like you're just kind of having a laugh. Like, was there a distinct moment in your career progression where you noticed it was trending more in that direction? Like, oh, I could really make like a world championship kind of run like was there a defined epiphany moment or maybe just a gradual realization um kind of a gradual realization and, and you know an, an epiphany moment as well so the gradual realization was um when i i before i fought in bellator i fought in fight Mice global let's call it. it's a russian promotion yep uh, and basically when I, when I signed there i knew what i was doing i knew it was stupid I knew it was not wise to do this. A lot of people tried to talk me out of doing it um, because it's a bit corrupt over there and the fights are extremely difficult. Um, you know yourself, any Russians that come into Bellator or the UFC or whatever, they have no names. No one knows any of them over there until you know their name, until they come in and they, you can see the level they are. Um, so there's, these guys are dime a dozen over there, to be honest. They're all really good. Um, so I went over there. I didn't care. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. And then I started winning fights over there and doing very well. And then I, then I kind of, that gave me a lot of confidence. I was like, well, I can beat anyone. This is like, there's no magic out there. There's no magic in other countries. It's just, there is blood and bones like everyone else. And you can beat them. So that was, that was a big moment for me when I kind of um, was out there and I kind of really realized what level I was at. And then obviously the kind of, a big moment was when I, when I beat Patricky the first time. And I was like, that's it. He's, he's the highest of the high at the moment in Bellator, really. Uh, when I beat him, so who's who's going to stop me? That was kind of my attitude then. I was like, I beat him. Um, so there was kind of two moments like that, that like that for me. Yeah, I appreciate the insights for sure, and that definitely adds some, you know extra momentum to like the possibility of a rubber match with Patricky just talking about how much of a an impactful career moment that is for you but can't overlook this fight here obviously a huge one with Benson Henderson and one that many are very much excited for and I appreciate you coming on the show and giving some insights man but like I was saying before I imagine your schedule is fairly busy so to that point is there maybe anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up Peter no I'm good thank you for the time um 
and and I appreciate you and, and good luck to you. Thanks so much, man. Looking forward to checking out this Bellator 285 main event and people can check that out on September 23rd. And yeah, again, to reiterate, thanks for coming on the show and have a good rest of your day too, Peter. Okay, brother. Thank you.